All right, we're getting ready and um, welcome to the Incomplete Skeptic Sober Wise Guy series. In this podcast, I generally interview old timers who are free of mind altering substances for often a few decades or more. Part of the reason I've chosen to interview old timers versus newcomers um, is because a lot of newcomers are already being interviewed and they're getting the amount of attention that I think is appropriate. Um, I've noticed that old timers are sometimes, from my perspective, marginalized in recovery circles. I think people often assume they don't need positive reinforcement or even worse that they have big egos that sh and they should be summarily dismissed as less important than newcomers. And, um, you know, I don't buy any of that. I, I think both are important. Uh, while arguably newcomers are the lifeblood of the recovery body, if you will, I suspect old timers are the backbone. And had there not been old timers present in my first meeting in, in the 12 step discipline, I don't know if I would have went back for very long. Just don't know where that would have gone. And in my opinion, God is the spirit of recovery holding both bodies together, newcomer and old timer. And there's more power in a room than there is a number of people there. Um, the objective of the Sober Wise Guy is to share experience, strength, and hope to the still suffering addict or alcoholic and to enlightened, enlighten or remind listeners about what the recovered life looks like and today, I am on marginalizing another old timer. My guest today is Bill B. He was in my first meetings of the 12 step discipline that relieved me from the bondage of self and alcoholism. Um, Bill B, welcome to the Sober Wise Guy. Thank you, Timothy. Uh, my pleasure to be here. So, yes or no, are you an alcoholic? an addict, a codependent, yes, yes, no, or just take it from there? Well, I, these days I can say I'm a double winner. I'm in uh, AA and in uh, l and mm, Me too. What was your drug of choice, as they say? Uh, beer. Beer? Yeah, me too. <laughs> what's, your, uh, what's your clean date? Um, <clears throat> I always explain because, um, I sobered up, uh, in August of, uh, 1981 and 12 years in, I had a, uh, uh, eight month relapse and, uh, I've been sober ever since. So I I've got 40 years in recovery, but I've got, uh, consecutive, con uh, sobriety. I coming up on, uh, 28 years. Yeah, I knew I knew that. I didn't know the exact dates and the like because you've talked about it in meetings and you don't hide any of these things. And mm -hmm. you know, I, I I think about when people marginalize uh, people in recovery, which is what I try to undo here in in the sober wise guy. And um, I I don't know that it's really valid to say that a relapse is um, some is like we're supposed to take something away from the person. You know, and when a person does uh, time in jail or prison, you know, they I've done time in prison and they said um, that I was doing life on the installment plan. And, um, you know, and I, I kind of thought it was true, but when your time is done, it's done. But when you go back again, you know, um, they look at your past record and and why can't they do the same thing with good stuff? You know, you're for you did 40 years on the installment plan and you only had one little hiccup, you know, and right. that hiccup could have killed you, man. I'm glad you survived, you know, so I'm not, I'm not, uh, saying it's, 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 uh, that we should just take it lightly, the idea of relapse, but, um, what do you think led up to the relapse for you? I mean, you're sober quite a while. Yeah, that's a good question, Timothy. I, um, and uh, let me uh, preface with uh, the reason why I describe my sobriety in that way is because 
when I came back in after my relapse, I struggled for a year and a half and uh, I had lost my spirituality and I feared God. And I decided to do 90 and 90 uh, after a year and a half. And uh, I, I got my program back and along with it, the 12 years that I had. So it's important, I think, too, you know, uh, to count that time. And so that's uh, uh, kind of how I describe myself, especially if I'm going to speak and uh, to let people know, you know, the whole picture. And uh, uh, what led up to my uh, relapse uh, was not learning how to uh, deal with life on life's terms. And uh, the, the way I thought about my higher power uh, was I started getting angry with him and blaming him. And uh, uh, then I also was hanging out in the wrong places. The, the old timers say, if you go to the barber shop long enough, you're gonna get a haircut. And uh, I, uh, I was at, uh, some friends at a bar way too many times got comfortable there and the Cokes changed to duels and the old duels one day changed to a real beer and uh, look out here I come now. So uh, the biggest thing with me was uh, when I came back in was recognizing the fact that I need to uh, develop a different form of uh, uh, spirituality and how I believe in the God of my understanding because uh, the other way didn't work. I can't blame God. I, I have to find a way that uh, uh, and recognize that he's there to help me. He's not uh, doing these things to me. I'm doing them to myself and how I uh, react to uh, life on life's terms. So that's what led up to it. And uh, uh, it was a struggle. Boy, I tell you, after you relapse, come back in, it was white knuckle and uh, way harder than the first time. And uh, it's still very clear in my memory, Timothy, the, my bottom, you know, after that 12 years and uh, our mutual friend Lois listened to the whole thing on the police scanners. <laughs> you know? And it was uh, quite the disaster. And uh, thank God I survived it and I'm back in recovery. Amen to that, man. The, um, you know, the old duels thing, as I, I kind of thought of old duels, just like an addict might think of powdered sugar you know what's what's the use you know, <laughs> <It's> know like, <laughs> take a line of powdered sugar right ah, yeah. wasn't that fun you know <laughs> right. so and uh right. i think i i did the odules thing a, a few times because there was an old timer who was uh, saying oh i drink odules all the time it's no big deal and I thought, well, maybe I'll try it, but it just way too much remind me of my my drug of choice, which was beer, like you. And uh, so it was a little too tricky, you know. So um, it, Lois Lutz, yeah, she caught you on, <laughs> on the police scanner. Um, what was what was up with that? What happened? Well, I after the night from hell and the high speed car chase and uh, uh, everything else. Uh, I got out, bailed myself out, you know, like three o'clock in the morning and uh, went to a meeting the following night. Well, I, I had gotten beat up pretty good by the uh, uh, police uh, with good reason, you know, and, and uh, seven squad cars and, uh, so I was looking pretty rough and uh, still had my same clothes on with blood stains and gashes and forehead and knee. And, and I went to the Friday night meeting, I'll never forget it. And Lois was there and uh, she goes, Bill, good to see you. How's it been going? You know, and uh, <laughs> well, that's so good, Lois. And I went into the DTs during the meeting. I was sitting there shaking and all beat up wow. and, you know, and it's like, wow, what happened? You know, you had 12 years, you know, eight, eight months ago, what the heck happened to you? And uh, what I proved was, okay, I am a real alcoholic. I have no business doing that stuff. And uh, 
I was so embarrassed because I made the front page of three local newspapers <laughs> with my debacle and moved the Gazette, the Courier, and the Free Press. And I could not Goodness. look at the articles. I couldn't look at them. I couldn't read them. I was so ashamed. Didn't show my face downtown for six months. And that was my welcome back into recovery. Wow. Sounds like a, a, a huge nudge from the judge, except for uh, you were the judge, really. Yeah. I think they, you beat them to it, you know? Yeah. Um, when you said that they beat you up and you, you deserved it, I assume that you were uh, flailing or fighting or being obnoxious or something. I, I don't know. Uh, I, when the cops pummeled you. Right. I, <clears throat> I I can't remember if I asked the cop when I was sober what had happened, but I most of this experience was in a blackout. And mm. uh, so I had no clue uh, okay. what, what transpired. I kind of came to when I was in the jail cell looking at the uh, telephone with the uh, bail number, uh, you know, and coming out of whatever. And uh uh, so yeah, I'm not really sure what happened that night, but I don't hold any resentment. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a waste of time to, for that. I was just curious if they said you had fought or something. Yeah, uh, I don't know. <clears throat> yeah. How many cop cars were involved? Seven <laughs> and they damaged two of them apparently. And they wanted restitution. And, uh, I mean, I can tell you the story I got. A sober lawyer, he's now passed. I don't think it matter if I mention his name, uh, Jack Walsh. Yeah, I knew Jack. Good guy. <laughs> and he got me a sober judge, uh, Judge Eggleston, also uh, <laughs> passed and uh, was uh, uh, in the program. And the three gentlemen in AA that had taken me under their wing um, uh, were well known. And I can mention their names now. I think it's Hart Burnett, Jack. Um, John Casper and Maynard uh, Johnson. Uh, well, Judge Eggleston knew all the, those guys really well and come to find out that I'm good friends with them. And I was a pallbearer at all their funerals. He, uh, uh, he went extremely light on me. I was very lucky mm -hmm. and uh, thank God for Jack and him because I had already learned my lesson. I didn't need rest, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, I didn't need jail, jail time to tell me uh, what I did was really messed up and holy crap, I need to be back in recovery. So it all worked out all right. Yeah, I think uh, judges are um, sometimes level headed and sometimes they're politically minded. And um, when they step up and give someone a break because they see that they've uh, they figured it out, yeah. you know um kudos to that judge and uh because you know they're going to catch some some possible flack when they actually show they have compassion you know and um just a contemporary thing you remember the sheriff that was drunk driving not too long ago i think he was a chief yes and, uh you know it, i saw alcohol problem plastered all over that guy you know and i i just hope you know, he sobers up and starts doing something with his life to help people, you know, that need help instead of just dodging a bullet and giving everyone the finger because he knows so many people or something, you know, so, but, um, so what, what is your relationship with your higher power look like? You said that's what really uh, undermined your, you know, sobriety is is letting that get um i don't know dissolved i guess um you lost your resolution and your relationship with your higher power and uh to warn other people you know um so they get a real clear idea of what that means what what red flag would you raise to people about that well i i had a understand the free will aspect of uh, our existence and uh, you know it uh, I learned from observation I mean we have free will we can do whatever we want and uh, uh, I, but then we also have to hold ourselves accountable and uh, 
<clears throat> I learned not to blame God that that's not how it works. That's my um, view on, on spirituality and uh, God is uh, uh, how it works is he's there to help us, but he's not there to test us, so to speak. When that gets brought up, you know, a lot. I don't think he's doing bad things to us to test us. And I think a lot of people believe that and it gets them in trouble and they get really angry with God. I don't believe that's how it works. So what I've come to believe in is the God of love. And uh, I'm not a religious person like so many of us. I'm a spiritual person. And uh, what I've come to uh, uh, discover through the years is a uh, two-way communication uh, with prayer and meditation, which has become very real to me. And uh, the way I look at God today is like the best dad you could ever have. He's patient and loving and he lets us do our own thing. And then when we fall down, he's there to pick us up and, and okay, do you wanna, you know, what do you wanna do and let us make our own decisions. And uh, that's the kind of loving God that I believe in. And I believe has been revealed to me, uh, his love. So much so that I've become a, uh, uh, an ordained uh, recovery minister is how I label it. And uh, today, uh, fast forwarding, um, I'm extremely active in uh, the Alano Club here in Richmond and uh, I'm a, a spiritual mentor and advisor. I'm starting to get into couples counseling with folks because I have both sides of it. I have the al and the AA sides and there's a need for it. I've actually detoxed people in my house. Uh, my house is a shelter. Uh, I have people in the spare bedroom off been on all the time. It's all recovery folks. And uh, I sponsor a number of men and I have recovery daughters. Uh, you know, I'm just really involved in so many ways. And since I retired uh, about six years ago out of river boating, I uh, have been, I kicked it up a notch. And what happened was I, uh, with my, my relationship with my, and the God of my understanding, I, I decided I'm all in. Once he revealed his love to me, and then I was like, okay, I get it now. What, you know, what do you want? I'll do it. And uh, uh, it's kind of morphed uh, recently into the counseling uh, of couples. And, uh, and I, there was a point in my life where, uh, too, I felt that he was calling me to start my own recovery church. And, uh, you know, i I haven't ruled that completely out, but I'm not getting any younger either. I'm, <laughs> I'm 71, you know, and uh, I only have so much energy. And uh, um, <clears throat> I'll just take it a day at a time, like we do in recovery and uh, go where he leads me. And uh, I have very strong faith today. And uh, this is what I'm for the most grateful for, Timothy, I'm, is my spirituality. Uh, I mean, I'm so glad to be sober, but I had no idea that it could be this good and uh, meaningful, purposeful. And this is what it's gotten me. It's gotten me this wonderful spirituality and, and now a whole way different way to look at life on life's terms that I can accept. And that's what I do with other people. I help them get through that. And uh, uh, so... Yeah, so here I am today, you know, and uh, uh, full of life and love. And uh, and the other thing I'll say is there was a point in my life, uh, Timothy, and you were probably right there with me, where we weren't capable of love and we weren't lovable. And uh, now today, you know, I couldn't tell you how many people I love and, uh, and how many people love me. And that's a gift of this program, too sure is even people that have uh, had near-death experiences um you know they generally come back and report it's all about love everything here that we're doing yeah and um i remember reading in the 
I think it's the Christian Bible. It could be the Jewish one. I'm not a Bible thumper, so I'm kind of, I like the Bible. I've read the whole thing. I just don't remember where everything is, but it says God is love. I think it was Paul said God is love. And, um, and if it's not about love, it's not about God because uh, God is love is, is kind of how he says it. And, um, you know, if somebody loves each other, then that's a godly person to me, you know. And um, when, they, when they come back from um, doing their little stint in, in heaven, I guess it is, after dying in this world, and they come back and they report that the only thing that matters is love. And, and I've listened to probably hundreds of near-death experiences, and um, I'm just really convinced that that's, you know, that's the thing that matters most is if we um, love each other, not judge each other, because, you know, um, it's one thing to judge in the moment and say, well, you know, this isn't such a good idea, <laughs> you know, but right. to, to, to impugn a person with uh, a sense of worthlessness intrinsically, you know, what are they really? And I think people get confused between judging behavior and judging the person and um you know uh, and i i just posted something the other day uh the judge capital j doesn't judge you know i don't believe he does i mm -hmm. i believe that he only loves us and he yeah. understands us fully so he knows where this you know these behaviors are coming from and uh so he's like the best dad you ever had he's, he's not a judge and i and i don't believe in fearing god why would you fear your best dad ever? You know, he's there to help us, not to hurt us, harm us, or anything like that. So, and I will say too, uh, Timothy, that I, um, I think like you, I, I've read a lot of books and uh, uh, Purpose Driven Life, uh, or not, that one really helped me too, but uh, Course of Miracles mm -hmm. is the one that made me, uh, helped me understand um, Christians use the devil, but uh, uh, of course, the miracles talks about our own ego. And that's what I wholeheartedly believe in. It's not the devil, it's our own ego. And we can withdraw ourselves into our own personal health. And the other side of that is our God centeredness and love. And uh, so fear and love. And uh, uh, that's what I truly believe in. And, uh, um, you know, I'm. Uh, I'm grateful for a number of books that I've read. And I've often said, I think I just posted recently that God is a librarian. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it, once we pray, once we do the third step and we pray for God's will, there is a gate that opens, a door. We don't know it. We don't feel anything, but we open a gate and uh, the process begins. And I believe in my case, uh, you know, he directed me with a voracious uh, thirst for knowledge to read all these different books that are going to help me understand better what he's all about. And, uh, um, you know, I, I too, um, I'm a fan of uh, a lot of uh, Christian, you know, uh, uh, beliefs and uh, beautiful things written in the Bible, but it's not my gospel. And, and actually what I believe in is God and God the Father is God, God the Son is Jesus. You know, they're not the same. And the Holy Spirit, I view, is, uh, is uh, God's very soul. So I look at it differently. And it's interesting because I have a, my uh, brother in law's sister is a full fledged minister, has a church, preaches. And I explained to her my thoughts, you know, like, oh dear, you know, and uh, she goes, oh, I, I, I believe the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know it's i it doesn't matter what i've come to learn is there there's more than one path and mm -hmm. uh, we get there and we're getting there in in our recovery program you know there's so many people that become so spiritual and uh they have it and how they got there there's different pathways yeah um i i think god talks to us all differently hoping we'll tell each other and one of the best books that i found in early recovery um was came to believe and there's 
just hundreds of, of short stories from every discipline about how people perceive their higher power. And, um, and you know, I remember one particular um, near-death experience and something you said reminded me of this guy. He was a minister who died and he was talking to, um, I think he was talking to Jesus. You know, I, I don't remember the story perfectly. I've heard so many stories, but I do remember the point that he made. And I, and, you know, he was told that he has to come back. He's not done here yet. He says, oh, okay. Um, I've got some things to do. Uh, fine. I'll go back, you know? And, um, and he said, oh, wait a second, what, uh, you know, he's a minister, he's a Christian minister, and he, and he asked him, well, wait, what religion am I supposed to be? And, uh, and he said, well, whatever one brings you closer to me. There you go. You know, and yeah. that makes sense to me, you know. Yes, me too. So, yeah. And uh, if God doesn't show up somewhere, it's because we're, um, we think that we're, I think we just can't see it. It's everywhere. It's like we're completely surrounded by heaven 24 seven and we get distracted by this world or whatever and get ticked off right. about the way someone drives <laughs> or something somebody said in a meeting, you know, and, and uh, whatever it, it might be. Um, but it, it, I don't know if you knew this guy, his name was Baron and uh, he's been dead for a while. I don't know, maybe 15 years, but he used to uh, say something that I really liked and I took it to heart. He said, you know, if you don't like something I say, take it up with God because God's the reason I'm alive. Don't blame me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, <know? Yeah. laughs> you want to blame yeah. someone, blame God, <laughs> you know, and I thought yeah. that was I thought that was a, a humorous way of dealing with his detractors, if you will. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I, I tend to hold a minority opinion oftentimes and I'm really glad that people have tolerated me, you know, through the years, especially in early recovery. I think you look like, yeah, you, I remember you looking around my apartment when you were, uh, and I was in early recovery and you're going to get me to a meeting and you looked around and, and I, you, you had this look on your face because you're seeing all the weird stuff I had up on the walls. I won't even say what it was. And, uh, and you look like you got dropped off on another planet or something like a ufo came down and started showing you stuff and you're looking around going <laughs> so i didn't oh, hide, hide the my character <laughs> what's that so i didn't hide my uh expressions very well then oh i think you were trying to you were trying to not be judgmental you know and um um you know to me it's not what we believe so much those are outside issues but, you know, ultimately, people love me until I could love myself. And, and if you would have came back to the program and people kicked you in the butt and said, oh, you relapse, get, get out of here. I mean, we don't do that. We don't shoot our wounded, as they say. And um, looks to me like you're passing on some good information here, and uh, which leads me to a couple of questions. Um, I it sounds to me like you you didn't use this word but you're a, you're maybe a type of healer do you think maybe that your healing relationships uh healing relationships with people i mean you talked about counseling and the like and um but are you healing the relationship that they have with their higher power at the same time what does that look like what kind of healer are you well um Yes, all the above. I, uh, <clears throat> I, I recently wrote about that too, that uh, um, I, I used to call myself a spiritual mentor. Uh, I am a recovery minister, but it, I mean, it is spiritual healing, especially noticeable when you're dealing with couples and uh, you're working on them to accept each other and love you know, each other. Uh, uh, but it, it is spiritual healing. And um, uh, what I'm noticing is when your uh, light shines bright, uh, a lot of people are attracted to you. And uh, it seems like spiritually things are really blowing up, especially, uh, you know, recently. And uh, I have a, little, a lot of people coming my way. And 
and you know if i call i say i, I work for the lord uh and uh uh he doesn't overwork us you know it, it's like i love what i do and uh, uh i'm passionate about it and uh, it's not work to me but uh, uh i feel it's a calling and uh, i get it i understand it it's very clear I know what I'm supposed to be doing. And, and when I'm working with people, I always say the prayer, may my words be your words. And this has actually been going on for many years, Timothy. I uh, I was still at the Stillwater Club when I, I had a calling uh, where I happened to be in the right place at the right time, which was really bizarre because I was never there at that time, but that day I was. And, uh, there was someone I knew from recovery that was suicidal and he asked to talk to me and we walked down by the river and talked for a couple of hours and he was laughing by the time he left. And everything that came out of my mouth uh, was very fluid, uh, well-directed. I didn't lose my train of thought. And I had, I think at that point, I knew enough to say, may my words be your words because I have ADHD and, you know, and, and I get spacey and everything was fluid. And, and I, I had experienced everything that that gentleman had gone through. And uh, it was like afterwards, like goosebumps and holy crap, kind of, you know, like, mm -hmm. wow. And that's kind of the start of when I really recognized that uh, this is how God works. He works through us and our experiences. I've taken the Purpose Driven Life uh, uh, group study twice, uh, Rick Warren's wonderful book. Uh, I'm a firm believer and I'm shaped in what I'm you know, supposed to do and uh, how it all works. And uh, uh, in fact, in front of me here on my desk, I have a whole bunch of Purpose Driven Life books because I've done it out of my house now too a few times. <laughs> but it's one of the most influential books I've read. and. Uh, this is what I'm shaped to do. And uh, uh, it's just gotten me to have such a wonderful, wonderful relationship uh, with a God of love, you know, who I believe in. So that's kind of how it is. Yeah, I remember um, some years ago, I, you know, technology. <laughs> it's funny how we use it. You talk about things you post, but uh, I put a sign off on my emails uh with two different things one scripture is from the jewish bible uh deuteronomy um love the lord the god with all thy heart soul mind and strength you know and others as yourself sort of a thing and and then uh god mold my life into the shape of your heart you know and um you mentioned shape so it reminded me of that and i mm -hmm. guess that makes me a shape shifter but god's god's the one that's doing the shaping you know and um if i'm willing you know to go to any lengths i can um get clean i can stay sober i can have a good life but it, it, it's not like bad things will never happen but the bad things are don't you think maybe almost fabricated by the human intellect it's like if we turn our will and our lives over the care of God, how does those things belong to us? And how can they be bad? It belongs to God. And if God allowed it, then can't it be used to make something beautiful with, you know? And it's like the guy that was suicidal. Um, you know, the right words are put in your mind and came out of your mouth for this fella. And then it gave him a tool to pass on to others and had he never been suicidal those words would never came into your mind and um you know so it's not it's not bad the things that happen in our lives it doesn't make it right it doesn't mean like we should justify everything because of it i'm, I'm not going there but um bill w was fond of saying in god's economy nothing is wasted and um yeah yeah you know, you, you've mentioned a few books, you know, so far, which makes me wonder what, I don't want to limit you because readers probably don't have just three favorite books, but if you wanted to uh, maybe mention your top three, oh. what would they be? 
well, uh, the Course of Miracles and Purpose Driven Life, um, uh, definitely maybe the top two. Um, um, also, uh, The Road Less Traveled. Mm -hmm. uh, and what that book told me was uh, life is hard, you know? <laughs> And sometimes it's a sentence, a uh, purpose driven life. When I was gun ho to do it the first time, and, uh, and I'm thinking about all this stuff I'm going to do, and me, and I, and me, and I, and then I read it, and it's first sentence, this is not about you. I'm going, what? <laughs> it's not about me. And it's not about me. Whenever I help people, I remind them that it's about them and, and God and them. And uh, mm -hmm. I've, I've learned that now too, you know, and tell them there's a reason why I'm here with you. It's because God loves you very much. Sounds like God created a flood in your life to raise your ark. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it's a good thing I know how to drive the ship. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. No doubt. It seems to be a good water analogy for you. You're flooded. Yeah. You're flooded with uh, God's wisdom now, and it lifts your it lifts your boat. It, it reminds me of an old saying um, that I read in a book somewhere that we might not be on the on the uh, same boat, but we're on the same ship, and uh, so we we get confused sometimes about our, our boat being the only boat. You know, you remember the old joke about. Uh, um, a particular faith that I won't mention the joke has gone around a bit and uh, they some guy dies goes to heaven and um, and he's getting the tour by St. Peter and he says well here's where the Jehovah's Witnesses are here's where you know the uh, Catholics are and and he said oh shh, be very careful here's where the shh, these people are and and they think they're the only ones up here so be very quiet yeah <laughs> you know and uh but i think we we tend to do that in our lives a little bit you know and i'm not making fun of that that religion because i happen to be a member of that religion so i am not putting them down for those people that but i'm a very open-minded person and i don't limit myself to that uh, i too study the course in miracles um it's the the idea that we talk about in, in recovery that I think helps so much is the we thing, you know, it's a we program and it's it's not a contest, you know, recovery is not a contest. Um how do you think the we program has helped you? Well, I I tell you, I um I have such fond memories of the early days. And I talk about those three men I mentioned often. Um, and I was at a point in my life where I needed a father figure. And uh, uh, those men were there and they gave me what I needed and that's what I wanna give back. You know, that is the we in the program. I can't do this alone. It doesn't matter if I have 40 years in recovery. Uh, I go to the early morning coffee and donuts before the meeting meeting with uh, folks that are 70, 80 years old with a bazillion years of sobriety, <laughs> you know, and we have so much fun, you know, and uh, the old timers. And uh, uh, there was a time that, uh, uh, I guess I can say it, yeah, the Stillwater Club where we were lacking in old timers. This was later on. And uh, uh, so there was a bunch of us with, uh, you know, 15, 20, 25 years of sobriety. But what we were lacking was people with 30, 40 plus years of sobriety. We needed a dad, you know, and it wasn't there. And uh, when I came to the Enrichment Club, I mean, we're, we're blessed. And uh, we need both. We we need both. We need the young ones because they they keep us, you know, uh, sit up straight because, oh, man, I'm right there with you right now when I'm hearing your story because I remember being there. And then we have the old timers with the wisdom, you know, to uh, come up with some profound things once in a while. And it's wonderful. You know, wouldn't you think you get tired of meetings after a while? <laughs> 
I love I, going. Yeah. Yeah. If I lost uh, the teachability thing, and uh, you know, every meeting seems fresh and new to me. And if we're growing, you know, we're not hearing the same thing. Um, you know, it's it's new information every time because you know we're we're following the white rabbit, the proverbial matrix white rabbit. And, um, and we learn more about things as we go. And, uh, you know, it's like when, when Solomon prayed, um, he, God said, I'll give you anything. What do you want? And he said, I'll, I'll take some wisdom, please. <laughs> you know, and, um, and I think that's a little like the serenity prayer, you know, we, we ask for serenity. We don't like create it for ourselves but we do ask for it that's our part and then we say yes when it's offered it's like god grant me the serenity if i could give it to myself why bother asking for god to do it you know uh uh grant me the acceptance you know if i could give myself acceptance why am i asking for it and, and it's about humility you know being humble to ask for what you need um to admit what you need and then of course the wisdom to know the difference and all those things are gifts right and that's why we ask for them and they're given to us you know in my perspective anyway um so really uh, uh, it sounds to me like you've already said this in a do dozen different ways what your superpower is but i tend to ask guests on on the show what your superpower is what is yours Wow. Um, well, I mean, uh, it's my spirituality. Uh, uh, I've had some very powerful uh, uh, spiritual experiences and, and awakenings. And uh, uh, I mean, Ben called to serve. He's revealed his love to me. Uh, he also showed me his burden one time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know what I'm supposed to do. And, and, uh, um, I have absolutely no problem doing it because I found out how much, you know, I, I mean, define love. You can only describe it so many ways, but I saw love in him. Like I was like, Oh, now I get it. Okay. I'm all in. <laughs> so powerful. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. the, yeah, it sounds like you're being shown things when you need them and you're having the spiritual experiences. And uh, I've noticed in life, we often have spiritual experiences, each and every one of us, we define it differently. But, um, you know, I've, I realized in my life, I've had spiritual experiences, but I didn't know it. And then I look back on it. And I go, Oh, that was a spiritual experience. And then now I have the spiritual awareness of the spiritual experience. Do you remember a time where you had a spiritual experience, but you didn't know it was one? Well, you know, the, you can define that because there's God moments mm -hmm. that we have. God puts us in places of bizarre. Our, our meeting today was uh, one of those God moments because my name popped up, <laughs> you know, in the picture. That's a God moment. I didn't. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anything. I should tell people about that. Yeah. Huh? It, I should tell people about that because they're going to wonder what's he talking about. But it's like I woke up the other day and I picked up my phone and right away I'm looking at a post of yours with your face there and there, you know, and I'm, I'm looking at Bill. Well, why is Bill's face suddenly on my phone and I go up a bit and I'm, I'm seeing this story. So later I go to my computer and I open it up and I read it and the like, but I knew right away or I chose to believe right away came to believe <laughs> you know um that this was one of those moments it's one of those god moments so i thought okay i'm supposed to talk to bill is how i viewed that you know and um and if it's not true he'll say no you know but i thought i should ask you to be on the show and uh and that's kind of how it worked with my my sponsor mary joe robinson when i asked god who should i do my fifth step with and he showed me her face without any uh without any doubt it was a spiritual manifestation right in front of me and um so there was no no question at all in that case and so i, I called her without any doubt but i did call her with a little bit of fear and dread because i didn't want to do this <laughs> yeah. you know and but well, I, I you know it's weird that you called me because 
at the same time, I'm having a uh, like a, another uh, revelation that uh, I need to speak. And uh, I'm recognizing that. And I think that was the whole thing with God wanting me to have a recovery church. And I actually kind of fought that because I, um, I just wasn't certain. So he just led me in a different direction and what, what I'm doing now. But now I'm starting to realize that I really do have a, a story to tell. And he gave me the gift to be able to, to tell it. Uh, you know, I, I, I have the, the right words to describe what, you know, that experience was like, and he wants me to share it. I've been saying that a lot lately. He wants mm -hmm. me to share. So I used Facebook as a tool and I put out the, you know, the spiritual, uh, uh, inspirational, uh, writings on Facebook. And I have so many people respond to me. Oh my God, Bill, we love what you write, you know, and because you don't know, you're putting that stuff out there, but you don't know if anybody's really paying attention or not. And uh, coming coming to find out that uh, there's a lot more than I thought, and and uh, um, I I need to be more forward. I mean, we're we need to be humble. We get that. But, but when we're excited and we want to spread the news, you know, then I almost feel like sometimes I have, it, well, am I being arrogant or am I being, uh, what am I portraying? And uh, so I would be guarded, you know, and it's like, no, just tell people what you're doing mm -hmm. and uh, don't worry about it. I mean, and it, it's not being rejected. So, uh, yeah, you know, it, absolutely. Getting yeah. the word out there. Yeah. God yeah, I can that. I can see that you're um being used, you know, that's my perspective. And the uh you know, somewhere along the line I realize that I'm in charge of what I say. It, follow this this line of reasoning. I'm in charge of what I say, you're in charge of what you hear. So it doesn't matter what I say. And yeah, I could say everything right and you'll hear it all wrong, possibly or I can say it all wrong and you'll hear it all right. It's not about me, you know? And uh, so if you like something I say, don't blame me. And if you don't like something I say, pat yourself on the back, you know? Um, but it's kind of a tricky question to ask someone what their superpower is, you know, because, you know, that it, they might be tempted to think that that's an ego question and, and it's not, you know, God is your superpower. So I didn't think you were going to stray from that. Um, right. you know, but what we hear when someone answers our questions is the most important thing. And, you know, if we're upset, it's because God or someone else ain't doing it our way, if you will. And that's the true source of what's wrong in the world is how we view it, you know? And, uh, I just don't think God has a conniption over stuff, you know, uh, especially the things that we get concerned about. But, um, you know, I touched, uh, I alluded to this earlier, but when, when I was suicidal in sobriety, I was suicidal for about three and a half years. I was going through the dark night of the soul. And uh, um, in that pesky third step, <sighs> it wasn't my life to take. Very inconvenient, you know. And I, I turned my will and my, for those that don't know what this is, the third step is we turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understand God. And I, and I couldn't rip off my life from god it didn't belong to me so i'd beg him and say well how about if you kill me then <laughs> you know because i really didn't want to be here i didn't want to deal with this stuff mm. but i had a lot of spiritual experiences during that uh turbulent time and i, uh, I wouldn't what's that i remember that phone call i'm sorry i um uh, mm. i remember the phone call you had with the minister in the middle of the night yeah wow really um i called a lot of people in those days to, i want you to say it because you remind me because i talked to so many people okay well you were gonna call someone in the middle of the night and uh just give them crap oh yeah yeah that one was before i sobered up though so. and that <laughs> and that was a minister he ended up yeah. having a wonderful talk with him um uh, i hope you, you don't mind that i brought that up <laughs> no okay but those are God things. Those are God oh, yeah. moments. Yeah, that was him working in your life even before you were ready for step three. 
Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. A, a real strong spiritual experience. Um, you know, my superpower is not killing myself, you know. And um, uh, and I realized, you know, I couldn't steal my life from God. Yeah, I already said that. But it, something else occurred to me is that if I gave up, uh, when someone else was in my shoes and needed help, that I wouldn't be there for him because I gave up. But if I went through it, then I can talk to it. I can say, yeah, you know, I do know what you're talking about here and I can help them. Maybe I'll be here willing and able. And um, to some extent, you know, but right. you, you, you see what I'm saying? Just a general idea. Yeah. Um, you know, it reminds me, Timothy, that, uh, you know, the 24 hour book, I view that as my Bible. And uh, when we come into recovery, those are just words. And now when you look at it, it's like, oh, my God, who wrote this? <laughs> because we are, it's totally relatable. And we've been there, done that. And we get it. And it's like, I'm still amazed when I read the 24-hour book. It's my God. And I did research at one time. I know it's parts from the Bible. And there's some other things in it. I don't even remember now. But uh, it's an amazing book. And uh, yeah, we live it and uh, then we understand it and uh, we can pass it on. Uh, and, it, and like the promises, uh, uh, they're real. Uh, you know, the, these things that they help us with and in our spiritual books that they provide, uh, whether they're conference approved or not, uh, <laughs> they're very helpful. And uh, that, yeah, that's what I view as my Bible. So if we're going to jump back to the books for a second, uh, the 24 hour book has uh, also impacted me uh, tremendously. Uh, to those that might not know what the promises are, the promises are something that's read in the textbook. Um, in the 12 step discipline, they have this big blue book. And in it, they have something that relates the um, the gifts, if you will, the the outcomes of sobriety and what will come out of it, you know, um, and they call them the promises, because if you just work these simple steps that you'll have these beautiful things happen in your life. And one of those things after going through the ninth step is intuitively knowing things that used to baffle us. And um, is there any hard lesson that you were grateful to learn that, you know, that used to baffle you, but then <laughs> you, you kind of flip the switch on it, like pain becomes power when you hold it up to grace, um, sort of a thing. That's an Ernie Larson quote, by the way. I didn't make yeah. it up. That's an interesting question. Uh, you know, I guess, and maybe this is an answer to the question, um, my biggest revelation uh, is the layers of my self-centeredness because I'll think I've got it mastered, you know, I've, uh, and then I'm just humbled once more because it's an ongoing thing. And they say in our program, you know, that uh, uh, um, our self-centeredness is the root of our uh, problem or alcoholism. And I believe that wholeheartedly. And that's been uh, my stickler. And uh, that's something that I constantly have to battle with. And that's equated to my ego. And uh, so there again, uh, ego on one side and the God-centeredness on the other. But that's, uh, uh, that's the major obstacle. But I'm so glad for the awareness uh, because, you know, the ick. Ego can be tricky, but we can catch the little bugger, you know, and, <laughs> and uh, correct it, <laughs> you know. So I don't know. I that's where my head went when you asked that question. I, you know, I don't even know if that quite answers it correctly, but uh, uh, the thought came to me. So that's what I share. What um, What are you most grateful for today? My spirituality, uh, my relationship with God, um, I had no idea. When we come into recovery, uh, we think we're just going to sober up. I didn't know it taught us a whole way of life. And 
you know what? We, we get out of it what we put into it. <clears throat> like I said before, I had a thirst for knowledge. So I was reading all about theology and different religions. And I have a feeling you probably did too. And uh, I educated myself. And I think that was by God's design. And uh, I was able to answer some of those questions and uh, have a better understanding. So today, my relationship with God, uh, the spirituality side of the program and the wonderful people that we meet in there, um, it, that's a spiritual experience in and of itself. You know, it's, uh, it's an awesome program. And uh, wow, what I've gotten out of it, what I have today is... Uh, I'm forever grateful for. I'm, I am a very grateful person and I know you are too uh, because I know you get it too. I mean, it's like uh, we're, we're, we're blessed. I mean, we, and I'm forever grateful for it. What, what does it mean um, that we have a daily reprieve contingent on the, upon the maintenance of our spiritual condition? Yeah, yeah, I mean, we have to keep keep going forward we can't rest on our laurels we have to mm -hmm. always uh, do the maintenance meetings are maintenance reading the uh, uh, books are maintenance uh keeping in tune communication both ways prayer and meditation mm -hmm. it's the maintenance that, that is required and it sounds like maybe it's a lot of work and yeah, but uh, it isn't after a while. It's our life. It's uh, the spiritual side of us that we thrive on. So it's not a, it's not work. It's, uh, it's who we become and uh, uh, what we're compassionate about and uh, anything to commune with the God of love or the God of our understanding or our higher power, you know, is, is a good thing. And uh, so, yeah. I mean, I, I feel blessed. Um, do you ever feel emotionally triggered by things? You mean as far as the urges? Or no. Um, triggered like um, somebody does something you think is stupid. They say something rude to you or rude to someone that you like. Or they say, you know, you like Buddy. What's wrong with you? Buddy is your dog, right? Yeah, Buddy buddy actually passed him out uh, i um, just i just realized that as soon as i said it, i said oops i just <laughs> oh well it, it's all right I mean, he was uh yeah he, uh the love of my life but he passed mm -hmm. about uh, five months ago and now i have a new dog i've had for a while and he's a two-year-old black lab mix just like buddy was but you know, and he's a therapy dog, just like Buddy was, and everybody that comes here that needs help, uh, and Buddy or the Buddy or Colton will go right up, you know, and, and it's amazing. I just watched the dog in action, and uh, he's changed lives, too, you know, both of them have already. Colton's a two-year-old, and he's already uh, mm -hmm. have people falling in love with him, and, and then it's exactly what they need. You know, it's funny how God works, but uh, anyway, I forgot where we were before. Uh, the about the emotionally triggered thing. Uh, ah. um, I, I, you must not have it as a big deal anymore because you would have probably thought of something right away. You know, some yeah. people hate tailgaters. Well, I, I have a button yet. Um, I used to have a thousand. Um, yeah, there you, you know. go. <laughs> I, you know, and it's like, boy, I look at that one a lot, you know, and, and uh, I'm not sure what we can uh, say verbally on podcast, you know, so okay. I'm being delicate, uh, okay. but uh, there's a certain uh, in your face uh, uh, mentality people have sometimes aggressive and it, it'll, it'll set me and uh uh, you know, when I came into recovery, I came in dual dependent. I had uh, rage and uh, 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 rage and alcoholism. So I really had my work cut out for me. And uh, the rage has been lifted. And uh, I purposely avoid situations where that could even be a possibility. Mm -hmm. uh, I drive in the right lane. If I go in the left lane and there's a car coming up way behind me, but he's coming pretty good, I, I, I punch it, get around the guy I'm getting around, get back right in the right lane, not to 
you know, put myself in a situation where yeah, I might yeah. get tailgated and then get angry. So I try hard to avoid those situations and uh, that button being pushed and, uh, um, you know, and it's been working for me. So. What, um, what brings you energy and joy on a daily basis? My uh, communion with God. Uh, I start every morning out in quiet communion. And uh, some days uh, I'm in tears uh, in the morning when I'm in meditation and I get what I call filled up, uh, uh, filled up with love, and which is God. And, uh, you know, a spiritual experience right there. You know, like uh, it doesn't happen every morning, but it happens a lot. And uh, a lot of what I write is coming when I'm in that uh, spiritual high uh, being filled up. And, uh, you know, these days, Timothy, I, I mean, I'm all about God. Mm -hmm. And I take it serious. And uh, I sound like you have some, uh, some healthy habits developed, though, and they're all, you know, uh, God centered. Yeah. when you wake up in the morning and the like and um so you have some healthy regimens or habits yeah i you know what it's it's helped me to be more spiritually in tune so i'm more aware all the time and uh, less distracted uh by life i'm less squirrel you know i am uh, that add you know uh is kind of lifted and i'm more in focus and more aware spiritually and I see that I recognize it, and uh, so it's with me wherever I go. It's almost like I'm seen with different eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's like mm -hmm. I'm I'm seen with God eyes now, the spiritual uh, yeah. side of things. And I'm more in the spiritual than I am in the uh, in the material. If that's a um, proper way to describe that, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, kind of in the veil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's, I'm at a point where I, I get it. I understand. I, I know what he wants me to do and, and uh, I'm all in and, and uh, this is what I do. And thank God I got here and I'm forever grateful to be here. And uh, um, I, have, I do love helping people and, uh, and I'm forever mindful when I'm doing it, that it's his, his words, not mine. And it's between the, uh, them, not me, you know, I'm always taking the me out of the equation, and, uh, mm -hmm. me equates with ego, and that gets me in trouble. Right, right. Let's uh, discuss forgiveness a little bit, Bill. Um, what, I, I don't even know if you need it anymore, really. It's like if you're, if you don't have the spirit of being offended, what, or what's to forgive, you know? <laughs> Yeah. So if you're not offendable, but what does it look like in your life? Can you forgive and forget? Is it necessary? Or are there times when forgiveness is not an option? I don't know. Generally, what is it, what is it about? Here, here's the way I look at it, Tim Timothy. It, it, I realize, my God, you, you don't even have to ask for a forgiveness. You already, you're already, it's not even a thing with him. I mean, he understands us wholly. He realizes when we mess up, he's letting us do our own thing. Uh, he understands there's no forgiveness needed. That's the way I look at it. And that's the way I have to look at other people. People that I'm helping in recovery, I understand why they do things they do because they're addicts, they're alcoholics. I get it. And uh, so why would I take offense? You know, and, and the things they do uh, with a couple counseling I'm doing now, I'm helping people to uh, understand this. And uh, and uh, with sponsees and you know it's it's like you know don't you don't have to go there you're already forgiven god is already forgiven i mean forgive yourself that's what we have a harder time with. we got to forgive ourselves and uh so i i totally look at that a different way now and uh which helps me not to judge people god doesn't judge him the judge doesn't judge who am i you know and that doesn't mean I'm perfect. I'll catch myself, you know, and then, uh, you know, I have to work on that. I got to humble myself and uh, constantly take my inventory, as they say, and uh, keep myself uh, you know, honed in properly so I don't 
so I'm right sized. <laughs> you have a big head, <laughs> and, uh, and that's a process too, a daily process of uh, ego versus God, uh, God centeredness, God's will, and uh, keeping right sized and uh, uh, everything. So yeah, no forgiveness. Who am I? I uh, yes, I forgive. Uh, the hardest uh, uh, person I had to forgive back in the day was my dad. And uh, it took me uh, into my 40s before I could come to a point to realize, well, geez, he did the best he could. Oh, God, he was in World War II. He suffered from PTSD before we knew what it was. He had all these issues. His dad was a raging alcoholic. His mom was, uh, you know, neurotic. You know, it's like, oh, my God. So I could finally think outside of myself to realize that, geez, you know, poor dad had some <laughs> bad problems growing up himself, you know, give the guy a break so I could forgive him, you know, and, and, uh, cause I wouldn't even put him on my list. Uh, <laughs> maybe the viewers don't know about step eight and nine, but, uh, putting someone on a list, uh, uh, and making amends and, uh, well, he wasn't on there and, uh, that was a process, but today, no problem forgiving. I, uh, I understand that there's more to people than what's on the surface. And the reason they do things is for a deeper reason than only God knows. And mm -hmm. I know that God isn't a vengeful God. So if God can love them, who am I? So that's the way I look at it. Uh, you mentioned sponsorship. Um, what What is it and why do you do it? Uh, because I believe in uh, um, giving back. Um, and now I realize the importance of it. Uh, like I said, I really jumped into the 12 step, which is the giving back of this program. Um, uh, when I retired, because I could jump in with uh, both feet. And uh, what I didn't know is what it would do to my spirituality. Uh, it's in the giving back that we uh, uh, enhance our, our spiritual awareness. And uh, uh, because I realize now, because we get out of ourselves, we're so focused on others now that, uh, and God, that uh, uh, we aren't focused on ourselves. And uh, that's a blessing, actually. <laughs> and uh i i all i want to do now is uh what god wants me to do in, in helping others and uh he takes care of me i don't have to worry about it yeah well i don't want to hasten the day um but what would you put on your tombstone oh boy Boy, I really have to think about that one. Uh, mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll tell you a little story while you're thinking about it. Are you ready to? No, go ahead. Okay. I, I used to, this, this sounds really morbid, but I used to actually go through cemeteries on purpose. And I'd read the, the headstones, you know, and I'd look for messages. And I just thought, you know, I... I want to see what people are writing on their headstones because it's like they're taking an entire lifetime and trying to put it in writing. And you're a writer, I'm a writer, so I want to see what it is, how, how they honed down an entire life and put it on a doggone headstone, you know? So yeah. I'd look for messages and I'd find some, you know, most are quizzical that are saying anything, you know, or they're general, he was a happy person, you know, whatever. But, um, and I, I came across and actually, and it, it was an obelisk and I, um, and it said the sins of our brothers, we write in sand, but their virtues we carve in granite. And that stuck with me, you know, and then I, the only improvement I would make is that they're the, the sins of our brothers, we write in water. That's where I would write them, you know. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it did come to me, Timothy. Yeah, yeah good, yeah. good. I was it's hoping been, I'd open the door. I've been reading about it all along, and I, I say it frequently. It would simply be be love, be kind. And that's what I would put on that. 
And I have to tell you, my uh, battery is, <laughs> I didn't, I oh, guess I didn't okay. have a full charge. So my battery yeah. right now is at 7%. Okay, we are we are one minute from being done anyway. That's why you got the uh, headstone question uh, at the end there. Um, I humorously thought I might put on mine, here I am, the one that I love. And <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it all led to this uh i'd probably have to say something funny i keep changing my mind about what it would be so yeah anyway bill thank you for coming to be a guest on the incomplete skeptic sober wise guy series i really appreciate it and i i trust your, your journey and i appreciate the the good that you've done in my life and um, thanks for giving me rides to meetings in the early days and, and not kicking me uh, in the butt and telling me to find someone else to get a ride from when you realize how, how racist I used to be and stuff, you know, and, and, you know, so thanks for loving me until I could love myself, man. You know, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're one of those, yeah. those people that were there and there's uh, not everyone is still alive that was there, you know, a few yeah. are gone. So um, well, I appreciate been, you, man. It's been a pleasure talking to you, mm -hmm. Timothy. Uh, it, it's good to see you. And I'm uh, glad that we did this today. I, I've enjoyed this too. And I like to get the word out there. So thank you for helping me do that. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for stepping in on our little world here. The incomplete skeptic, sober, wise guy. Um, catch you on the rebound. Peace out, Bill. Good to see you, Timothy. Yes, sir.